Hello guys and welcome to another video. Today we are going to learn how to create a queue system using Redis and Node.js. So for this video we are going to use this library called bool that basically is uh, an implementation of queues directly with Redis commands. So all the heavy work is done by this library and we just connect to their API. And the idea of this project is that at the end we can have a queue system where we can send emails to users and the reason why I choose to uh, create this type of uh, project is because first is a common use case on uh, basically a lot of web development projects and also because I think it's a really easy implementation and if this is your first time creating queues uh, I think it's going to really help you understand at least the basics and then you can later create your own queues. But before we start diving into the code, uh, I would like to show you guys what are we gonna be using and what do you need uh, for this project. So if we take a look at the package JSON, here we have an express, the express dependency. And the reason is because we actually have in our entry file an express app and we already define an endpoint and this endpoint is the one that we are going to use to send uh, the emails so basically uh, you need that then we also need bold and bold board bold is this library you can go ahead and see that in uh, their github page how to install it you can use npn or yarn and also if you're using typescript uh, you can install a uh, you're gonna need to install also the types pool and and this pool board is just a front-end application to inspect uh, the queues and uh, you can see they have different ones the task for is uh, an official uh, library from this guys that created the bool library as well but I'm using bool board because it's free with task for you need to pay I think I haven't tried it yet, but I, I saw there that you need to pay for that. But Bulbor is a great library. Uh, I have used this for production and I think it's great. So you will need to install that. And also you will need node mailer. I guess you probably already know what node mailer is, but if not, uh, basically it allows us to send emails. Uh, so you need that as well. Perfect. So also one thing that you guys need is to have a redis server running in your computer uh, for this particular project i'm using docker and the reason is because i'm using windows and i had a lot of troubles using the windows version in here uh, so i decided to use docker uh, it solves the problem for me you can use docker as well or if you're using a linux system you can just install redis without a problem uh, also one thing that I might be doing in later tutorials is to use docker for all of the projects because I think it's easier for you guys just to download the project and run the project if you have docker so yeah that's a great thing about docker so now that we have that ready we are going to run the project so for that we use docker compose up if you're using docker if not you need to start redis and also you need to start your backend so in this case we are going to run our application in port 5000 and now the application is running perfect okay guys so now it is time to start actually working with queues and see how all of this process goes so Creating a simple queue is actually uh, easy. Uh, we just need to basically use this line of code and we will have a queue system. But there is a couple of things that we need to pass there as well that they are not mentioning here. So to create queues, I like to have a folder called queues. And because we are going to create an email queue, so I'm just gonna name that email.queue.es. Okay, so we need to import first bool from bool. And now we define our email queue. So we create a new email queue is equal to new queue. 
at this case is bool and we pass as the first argument the name of the queue in this case i'm just going to name this email and then as you can see we have options here uh, so these options later we are going to see that we have a lot of a lot of options inside our queue that we can pass but the most important one is to connect to our Redis um, server. So in order to do that, we pass here Redis. And Redis can be passed uh, either with an object, and we pass the host, the password, and the port. But in this project, I'm using an URL, so we can just use the URL inside here. So let's take a look at the Docker Compose. Here we are passing a custom environment variable called Redis URL. This Redis URL is just connecting to this Redis instance that we have here. So we can use process.env.redisurl and with this we will have our queue uh, created. Okay, so one thing to know about queues is that we have three main different roles. We have a job producer, a job consumer, and we also have events listener. But events is something that we're not gonna uh, work in this project. Maybe later I will create a video just for this type of, uh, for the events. Okay, so a queue can have many producers, many consumers, and many listeners. But for the email queue, we are just going to work with one for produ one producer, one consumer, and that's it. So. A producer is just a way to add new jobs into a queue. You can think uh, the producer is adding a new item in an, an array with data. So later our consumer can execute that function or can execute a function or process a heavy work based on that data. Okay, so then we have listeners just really quick to understand what a listener is are events that happen in our queue. So for example, we have a completed event in here uh, that gets executed once this consumer is done with one job. Uh, we can also have an error. We can have a progress. And I think there are more events that I'm not sure right now. But let's take a look at this jobs life cycle to see how everything works. So we have the jobs, the job that gets added. Our producer adds a job so it gets on this state then it will move to the wait state right this delay state is another type of job that we're going to see later and how we can add it but for now let's just see that uh, when we add a job it gets added to the wait state if we have more jobs getting executed uh, it's going to wait when it's free we are going to move to the active and once the job is done we either move to complete it or failed if it is failed and we have a retry um, logic or something we are going to auto retry this uh, job but if not the job is going to be finished and that's pretty much uh, all all it is on this we have the producer that creates this and then we have the consumer and then we have the events on this part okay so now let's just start creating our producer so to create a producer we are going to create that inside our email queue so we're going to have a function called say new email and here we receive data that can be of type any okay so inside here as you can see we call our queue and the add function so email queue the add and we pass data and then we also have some options saying okay and the reason this is the actually the reason why i'm using a function to create this producer or for this producer because i want to have uh some options that i don't want to be passing every time i call this producer so i'm just gonna have a function that have everything and we pass just custom data on this function and adds a new job into the queue but for now, we are just going to leave it like that. Later, we're going to see the options in here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create our process to add the consumer. So the way that I like to do it is creating also a new folder called 
processes and in here because this is an email so email for the email queue i'm going to create an email that process ts and this is just a function as you can see our process is just a function with the job argument so we are going to define the email process and this takes a job and this job is of type job from bool and this job basically it has the data that we are going to receive from here so when we add a job this data gets added and we can read that data from the job that data i think that makes sense so for now i don't want to do anything so i'm just going to print console log i'm going to print hello uh, or actually i'm going to print the data job that data and this needs to be async so now that we have our process there we can uh, pretty much export this or export default uh, email process great so now it is time to add our email process here so we do that using our name of the queue process and here we pass our email process a is coming from this folder over here or file sorry and perfect now we can export default or actually we can export just the same new email and with this we will be able to add queues into uh or add jobs into our queue and execute something in this case we are just doing a console log it doesn't make sense but later we are going to see how we can send the email from here so uh, if you guys remember here we have this Redis commander thing that basically will allow us to see the data uh, that we have inside the Redis application so let's just go ahead and do localhost and this is in the port 8081 okay let's refresh we can see that we have the Redis we don't have anything yet because we need to actually execute the uh, or call our producer in order to see something here so let's close everything let's go into our app and inside here uh, I want to pass the same new email right that it is coming from email queue here we pass the data in this case break that body so we uh, get the, the body from the request and we do a wait right so okay this is async okay so with this we are adding uh, a new job and we are going to console log something so we should be able to see the console log here and we also should be able to see also the data in the queue so for this i actually have the endpoint ready to execute here on postman so we are calling the uh, the local host 500 uh, 5000 sorry and we uh, are calling our endpoint and here in the body we're going to pass uh, this data that basically later we're going to use to send emails but for now we should be able to see this data uh, in the queue so let's just click send we get the status okay we get the console log from our producer and if we refresh we can see that we have this email queue we have a completed state with a value of one so this is uh, the job that we were trying to execute as you can see the data that we pass is this one over here is our request that body and we only made one attempt right now let's just try to fail on this on this uh on this process so we can just throw an error something bad happened okay so we wait until our server restarts okay so now we have our server there let's just click again send and 
we don't see any console log. Okay, we refresh. Now we see that the queue that we just added, so this number two, we get uh, the reason why it fails. We also have the data that we pass in here, the attempts that we made. Uh, and we also have that it would it, it is in the failed state. So now if we take a look at the job life cycle, this one, the first one went directly to the completed event in here, and the second one went to the failed event. Now because we don't have an auto retry uh, system, basically uh, we just fail and we finish, but we can pass a retry system and doing that is actually really simple. Let's just go into our email queue here where we are creating our or adding new jobs. We call the okay, let me see, it is not auto completing for me. Okay, so it's not working because it is attempts. Um Okay, so now we have that and we can at least do two attempts for this email queue. Okay, we wait until restart. Okay, so now we click send again. All right, so we can refresh. And now you can see that we made two attempts to uh, do this uh, job, but at the end it still failed. So it failed uh, number three and number two. Great, great. Now it is time for us to actually do something with the process. So we are going to send an email so we can see how everything works and see how it actually helps uh, using queues. Okay, so remember we have node mailer here it is the one that it is actually going to be doing everything in this part. So let's take a look at the Node mailer documentation really quick. And literally we are going to copy everything that we have in here. Uh, I don't see a reason why not. So first thing is to actually require this. We are not going to use require. We're going to use uh, import. So we import from our mailer. Okay. Okay, so now we have non mailer there. And inside here, we are going to copy this uh, entire function. So, okay, we copy and paste that in here. We add some format. Okay, so really simple. Let's see what we are doing in here. First of all, uh, we are creating a test account that we, uh, this is an option that we have. For example, when we are doing this type of testing, so this is great, but you can connect your Gmail account if you want, or any SMTP server, or whatever you wanna use in here. But uh, we just create the transport uh, in here. Uh, we pass the user, the password, and in here, this is the part where we need to change. So remember that in our endpoint, we have this uh, information already in here. We have our from, or to, our subject, the text is uh, the plain text body, but we are not gonna be using that. And then we have our HTML. But in this case, I don't wanna use HTML because I don't wanna pass HTML in here. I just wanna pass a, a simple message, but we're gonna change that later. Uh, so in here, we can just get our job that data because our job that data is going to have that information in here. Now let's just make this a little bit bigger so we can see better. So we are printing the message ID and then we are trying to preview uh, the email because the only thing that we can do here is preview the email. We cannot uh, actually uh, receive an email from from this test account. So 
for this we are not going to do it like that we are going to return the actual uh, message url so we can see it later in our uh, queue or in our redis commander ui so let's save this okay so now that we have this there is also one thing that i want to add here because if not we are going to get errors so I'll reject unauthorized this yeah i'm gonna pause i pass false in here great okay so now let's uh go into our endpoint in here and send an email in here i'm gonna pass basically this uh request that body but for the html part i want to do a custom message that says hello uh or not hello i'm gonna pass the break that body that message i'm gonna close that okay uh or actually i can do this uh i can do uh the message and i can do uh rest body press that body so we actually don't send the message there All right so with this uh we will be passing this data here yeah, or we will be receiving that data in here to send the actual email so here instead of having html we have a message right so now let's try and send this we received the status okay as you can see it was really quick we didn't have to wait for that email to be sent and we also cut the console log of this message and now we have number four we have that uh it was completed uh as you can see number four was completed the data that we receive and we the return value because we are returning here the url we can open this and see how it looks okay so welcome to your new account you can see the subject here uh, we have the the email that it was it was being sent from, and the receiving. So, I think that matches this data that we sent here um, to uh, the subject and the message. Uh, great. Now let's try something with the attempts here. Okay, let me make this screen here. Okay perfect we can close this also not mailer because we have pretty much all we need so uh with the retries okay so as you can see here we are making two attempts and i actually want to make five attempts right i'm sending this email but i'm going to throw errors on purpose okay so let's just here do if the job that attempts made is less than let's just say two i want to throw a new error that says something or server is down right if not i want to continue send the email so here we're going to see that we made two attempts and the third one was sent so let's just save this okay so now our app is running we can click send again now we get the status okay and we are going to get errors probably okay so yeah okay so we got uh two attempts that we made uh then we had a failed in this uh, job that the server was down and then uh we got the result at the end it works at the end perfect okay guys so now we can pretty much delete this error there and now we like to go and connect our bull board uh, dashboard so we can see the queues in an interface uh, 
So doing uh, the connection is really simple. Uh, remember, we need to have the bullboard library here installed. And inside our email queue, we just need to require the set queues and the bool adapter. Okay, so we do it like this import from a bool board. Okay, we need set queues. And we also need the bool adapter. Uh, so probably after creating the queue, we can do set queues. Here we pass an array, new bool adapter, and we pass an a uh, or queue. So with this, we just added our queues into the uh, bool dashboard, and we just need to create the endpoint to access uh, to the dashboard. So as you can see here, we just call router from bullboard and we use, uh, we pass that in, inside our application, express application. So we can do, uh, yeah, import on bullboard. And here we pass router, right? And uh, maybe here. We can use our admin use and we pass our router. So now we save this. We wait until our server restarts. Okay, so now our server is running again. Now, okay, before we do it, let's just go ahead and see if this is actually working. Is it inside admin use? Okay, so now we can see. Let me just make this uh, full screen. We can see that we have our latest uh, queues that we run. We have our completed queues uh, with the return value, the data that we sent, uh, the options that we have for the uh, for the uh, job, and then we also have the failed jobs. Uh, here we can see that uh, the error that we get, the data that we pass options when we create in the job and we can either retry this queue as you can see here we can delete it we can clean everything retry all uh, here we can clean all so this is great when we are actually uh, working with queues and let me just by sending uh, or sending and yeah creating a new uh, a new job so let's click send so as you can see, it's going to be moved to the active and when, once it is done, it's going to move to the completed state. As you can see, this was the last email that we sent. Here we can see the date of the time uh, and everything. So yeah, this is perfect. Okay, guys, so now let's take a look at some of the options that we have uh, with bool as well. So in this case, we can have a rate limiter for our queues. Doing that is really simple when we are uh, creating our queue we just have these options here uh, when we can pass the limiter with a maximum of jobs per uh, in unit of time so in this case will be something like limiter here and we pass just a max in this case a thousand and the duration could be five seconds all right so you can play with this it's an option that we have we also have named jobs so in this case uh, we can name our jobs in here so for example when we uh, have multiple jobs and multiple also uh, workers we can define uh, as you can see here uh, the name of the of the job and in here the process the name of the job and the process so in this case this is a transcoder view as you can see we can do pretty much any type of work here. We're transcoding files. Um, so that will be adding the name here. For example, we can pass this email. It doesn't make sense, but it's an option that we have now. It gets uh, the data moved to the right. And then we have also our options here. But this is something that you can play with as well. Now moving on, we also have some, the, uh, we have different job types. So in this case, we can change the configuration here to make the job to be instead of 
first in, first out the order uh, in that the job gets executed to be uh, last in, first out. As you can see, we can pass that uh, here in the options uh, just next to the attempts. We can pass, for example, here as in, first out, it can be passed through. So that's an option that we have. Now the delay uh, job that we have, we can add a delay to the jobs in this case. I think that is super simple. It gets delay five seconds this queue, right? So for example, we just pass the delay option here. And if we add, for example, five seconds. Okay, let's wait to the server to restart. And if we take a look here, we have a tab here called delayed. And if you guys remember in our life cycle, the when the job gets added, it will move to the delayed state here. So by just adding the delay here, our app is running there. So let's just click send. And if we take a look at the delay type, we should be able to see this is delayed for less than 10 seconds and once that time pass we move to the active and then move to the completed um, tab here so that's one type of the uh, of job that we have then we also have priority that we can pass in here same thing we just pass this option here I already I don't know why it's not auto completing for me but you can pass priorities on this uh, right that's one thing that we have and then we also have uh, repeatable uh, jobs. And these ones, uh, you can use it for different type of uh, use cases that you might have. But in this case, uh, we can pass the repeat option here for our job. So in this case, let's just say that we pass repeat and we have every, right? So every 10 seconds and be a maximum of a uh, hundred times. So every 10 seconds we repeat this this job. You can use it to send reports or something to users. But I guess for reports you will use something like a from job where you pass instead of passing the uh, every and limit option you pass a Chrome specification. You can pass Chrome and you can pass the Chrome specifications. Uh, here we we get that the job repeats once every day at 3 15 a.m so they added here let me just go back the guys from bull added here a tool to see how cron jobs work so you can basically just go ahead and you want to play with this and, and pass the specific uh, the, the volume here so you can just pass that and the job will repeat uh, uh, we'll repeat based on that specification. Um, here, there are some considerations that you need to have, but to uh, stop or remove a, rem a repeatable job, you just pass this method over here. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you had learned something new. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, uh, I would really appreciate uh, a like to the video, a subscription as well. That would really help me a lot on growing the channel. Um, also, any questions that you might have, let me know um, as well. I'm going to leave a link in the description for this project so you can download this for free. Also, uh, the links for each one of the libraries that we use. Uh, yeah, thank you so much again for watching and see you guys in the next one.